Hey guys, we're going to be doing two quick bug fixes and then we're going to be fixing our all teams query that grabs the teams that we put on the sidebar because right now it's only fetching the ones that we are owners of. So if I invite a person to a team like my cool team, it's called cool team if you can see that here. Um, if we invite Bob15, Bob15 is not going to see our team when he logs in right now. So we need to change that. But before we get into that, um, let's discuss the bugs. These are things that people in the comments have spotted out, so thank you guys for catching these and uh, showing how to fix them. So we're gonna fix those up real quick. And the first one is this little thing that pops up here, form submission canceled. And the reason why that comes up is if I click invite team and I hit cancel, this guy pops up. So what we're going to do to handle this is come over here and uh, change how we're doing these. We're handling people's clicks. Now, there's one quick optimization that we can make as well while we're fixing these, and that is to toggle instead of having a close and open. So right now I have um, two methods that handle um, opening and closing this uh, add channel modal. So here I'm turning to true, which opens it, false uh, turns it off, and I'm currently talking about this little sidebar here. So when I click on that, we take it to true, it pops up, I hit cancel, takes it to false, turns off. Now we don't need two of them. Instead what we can do is we can do a toggle. So toggle add channel modal. And what we can say is if the current state is true, we want to take it to false. And if it's currently false, take it to true. So if it's open, close it. If it's closed, open it. So the way we're going to do that is set state one way is to pass in an object just like this, but you can also pass in a function. So we're going to pass in a function, and what this function takes is a state, and then you return a new state. So we're going to take the state, and then we're just going to invert the current state's open add channel. And we're going to do the same thing for these two. So get rid of that. We're going to say toggle invite people modal. And same as up there. And then we're going to say not state dot open invite modal. So now down here in our on close and then we click, we can use the toggle everywhere. So toggle add channel, toggle invite people, toggle add channel, toggle invite. Now this should work the same, but this doesn't fix our little warning that pops up. So as you can see, closes, opens, okay. We see you get that little warning. And the reason for that is if we come over to our modal over here, notice how the on close we are passing a parameter. You don't see the parameter being passed, but if we wrote a function, we could pass in a function, it looks kind of like this. So this modal component passes us an event object. Um, so we don't want to do it like that. We're going to keep it like this. But in our sidebar over here, we're going to handle this event. And all we need to do is say e.prevent default. And then that little warning goes away. And now let's refresh and see it. It's a little plus. Hit cancel. Cool. Nothing pops up anymore. And same thing here. But there's one small thing that uh, we just added. And it's a bug. So if I come over to my add channel modal, you'll notice I also call on close all the way down here and I don't pass any parameters to it so if that so notice how on channel or on close no params here but we're passing params here and in our sidebar we assume that e is passed to us so we can't really assume that so we're just going to add an if statement all right close that So now we're just checking to make sure. So it doesn't affect what we had before. So still don't get the error, but now um, I can still add users and everything be okay. So now let's work on our all teams query. So I'm gonna invite the uh, the user Bob six or Bob fifteen on Bob sixteen to my cool team. So add the user, and did I re-add him? Let's add. Bob 16 
or 17. All right, so we just added Bob 17. So I'm gonna log in with Bob 17. And I'm just gonna come view my team. And we don't see cool team. Oh, there's one more bug I wanted to fix before we get into this. Sorry, I forgot about it. And that's, notice these numbers up here? If I put in a really big number, that, that, that causes an error. And the reason for that is, in our code over here, this is a really quick change, in our view team code. So we're checking if we get not a number, right? So we're checking whether parsint works or not. And if it doesn't work, we just pass in a zero. But what we're not checking is if we get a valid number, but the number's too big. So the way we're gonna do that is Lodash will return a negative one. So team IDX is equal to negative one, and it only returns a negative one if it can't find the index. So in that case, if we can't find the index, we'll just return the first one, the first team. And we know we'll have some kind of team because we're checking the length. And the same thing with channels. So team.channels, or oops, channel.idx equal negative one, then we'll just show the first channel. Okay. Now if I come back over here and I put a really big number, we shouldn't crash anymore. Oops, we still crash. Um, what did I not do? If channel is equal to negative one, oh, I put three ends. Okay. All right, now we're all good. So I wanna see my cool team show up here because I've joined that team. So the way we're gonna do that is by fixing our query. So this is something we're gonna go back to our database for. So right now we're only grabbing the teams that uh, we're the owner of. And we'd also like to grab the teams that we are a member of. So we're gonna create a new query for this. Ideally we do this query, we have one query that does both, but I don't think that's possible just with the way our database is set up. Uh, do let me know if you think we can and if you can uh, come up with a SQL query that grabs both the teams that we own and the teams that we are part of because it is more efficient if we do it in one SQL query. But I'm going to split this up into two queries because uh, I think that's an easy way to do it and uh, I don't know how to do it the other way. Slash, I don't even think the other way is possible, but it might be. So we're going to create a, uh, let's start with the schema over here. So all teams, we're gonna say uh, maybe invite teams. So these are the teams that you have been invited to that will show up. These are very poorly named. This should be called like my teams and these should be like uh, maybe teams I've been invited to or something. I don't even know what to call this, um, but all teams is not a good name for that, but I'm not gonna go rename everything. We'll just keep it for now. So invite teams uh, returns an array. And now in our resolver, we're gonna say, we can pretty much copy this because it's gonna be very similar. Invite teams. Now we're gonna require auth, and now we wanna find all uh, of our teams, but we don't really care, right, if we're an owner or not, so we can get rid of that clause. We still care if, uh, we still wanna return raw because that's a little faster. What we really care about is whether we're a member or not. And the way we check these things in SQLize is by using the include. So what we can do is we can include models that we are associated with. So I'm gonna copy this. And that allows us to basically do a join. If you know what joins are in SQL, um, they let you grab data from other tables and combine them. So the model that we are associated to is models.user. Right, so our member table that we created is join table and it associates teams and users. So this will join the uh, team and user together. And what we're gonna be looking for is where the user ID, so the ID is equal to user.id that we have here. And now we don't need to worry about paranoid. So that's it. So our invite teams query is good to go and we can run this on the front end. So 
Now we actually need to call this guy and we're gonna really see the power of GraphQL. So we just added a new team query. So you might be thinking, hey, we need to make a whole separate query and call it twice. But no, with GraphQL, you can just add them on. So I'm gonna say invite, what I call it, invite teams, invite teams, and then I can do my select and I'm gonna select the same fields here. Um, I'm gonna just do export default right now. Well, no, we'll just, we'll say export const, I don't know, just so these red lines go away. Okay, so we have our all teams and our invite teams, which are gonna run at the same time when we send it to the server, which is really nice. So we didn't have to create a new route or anything, and we didn't have to make two requests. This is one request to the server where both are getting, are gonna happen. And then in our view team over here, now we have two of them, so all teams and invite teams. So now I'm just going to console.log invite teams, and we can see our teams pop up over here. All right, so here we can see, oh look, he's associated to two teams, team A and the cool team. So nice, so we see team one, team two, he has access to, and also these two teams here. All right, so let's grab those two teams and merge them with the uh, teams that this guy owns. So currently that's all teams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a just a teams list. So const teams is gonna be an array and we're going to join all teams and invite teams. And now, instead of looking at teams, or all teams, I'm gonna look at teams, and we're gonna look at teams here, and here, and here. Pretty much every place you see all teams, we're now gonna do just teams. And I don't think there's any other places, nope, there's no other places that we're using all teams. So now we come back over here, Oh, we broke something. Um, teams, oh, we needed to spread invite teams too. Okay, cool, so now we see our teams, and look, I can join, or I can view the teams, and I can switch to the different ones, and I can see all the different ones. So now, I see this little invite people thing, but, I'm not the owner of this team, so I shouldn't be able to invite people because I don't own that team, right? So what we should do is in our little sidebar here is we should uh, basically not allow us to view teams or view or see that invite link at all. So to know that, we need to come back over to our query here and we need to grab the owner. So owner, owner. So now if I console log this, we can see what this looks like. So console.log teams. Ooh, can we not even grab, maybe I don't have owner in my schema. So let's come back over to team. Oh no, look, I have owner. And, all right, bad request. So let's look at our server. We just got an error. Um, no error here. Hey, look at these little arrows. Those are kind of cool. I think that's the SQLize auto-creating things. And I don't know what this error is going on here. I thought this would be a quick little thing where we can just grab the owner, but it's not. So we'll deal with this in the next episode. So ideally we select the owner from all teams and invite teams and then we pass that to our sidebar here and then in our sidebar we only show um, the invite people link so we have to also pass it all the way down to channels. We only show this thing if we are a team member right? 
or the owner of the team. And also really you shouldn't be able to create channels either. Just, just out of curiosity, let's see what happens if we try to create a team or, in, or create a channel. So uh, uh, I don't know. And we get an error. Cannot reach property channels of undefined. So that's good. So we actually are preventing them from doing that in the back end. And if I refresh, oh, it does show up. So that's a problem. So we also need to prevent um, users from creating channels if they're not the owner, um, unless we give them privileges, right? So we'll work on those next um, in tomorrow's video. So thank you guys for watching. I'll save this code and put it up on GitHub so you can check it out.